President Obama has pledged to get Congress to repeal the military's so-called don't ask, don't tell policy and the country's top military man. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs apparently goes along with that. He personally said so the other day, Michael Mullen. He supports allowing gay service people to serve openly in the military. So how easy will it be to eliminate the old, uh, the current actually don't ask, don't tell rule? And what would it mean for the military? Let's turn to two real soldiers, two Iraq War veterans, John Saltz, executive director of VoteVets.org, and John Powers, the chief operating officer for the Truman National Security Project. I'll call you by both your names, gentlemen, so we don't get confused. John Saltz, you serve. Give me a real-life example of what it's like to serve with gay servicemen and women and how it works. What's it like and how does it work effectively? Well, the way it works right now is you, you come home from the war and, and like I was, I was on vacation with a couple of my friends. We were traveling uh, around and, and they said, oh, by the way, that you know that other officer that was with us, he was gay. And I was like, really? I had no idea because it just was completely irrelevant on the battlefield when you, you've got lack of body armor, you're trying to figure out your mission. And, and you know, there's as I, I was just shocked on Tuesday when I listened to Admiral Mullen live when he said, in the room, I've served with gays since 1968. Uh, everybody knows the gays are there. and. Uh, when you serve with them, you just don't even think twice about it and didn't even know. Yeah. And obviously, they, they my, can't. my dad said the same thing about the Navy in World War II, but you, it's just a fact of life. Yeah, absolutely. Just when just I was on the ground in Baghdad in 2003, actually, John and I were in the, the same unit. Uh, we, there was a soldier, one of my soldiers, who, when things got really hairy and there was a fire, fire right outside our gates, this, who we, we knew he was gay, but you don't ask, you don't tell, and he jumped in a, a tactical vehicle, drove outside the gate, hooked it up to a burning Humvee, dragged it back in. That's a guy you want in your foxhole with you. That's a soldier. It didn't matter what his sexual orientation So we're talking was. about combat postings. We're talking Absolutely. about real in the, in the kind we're of situation. Really in it. We were in the most volatile sector of Baghdad. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what I want to hear. Let's go. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs Michael Mullen uh, supported repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell earlier this week. Let's listen to the, to the uh, Admiral. It is my personal belief that allowing gays and lesbians to serve openly would be the right thing to do. No matter how I look at this issue, I cannot escape being troubled by the fact that we have in place a policy which forces young men and women to lie about who they are in order to defend their fellow citizens. For me, personally, it comes down to integrity. Theirs as individuals and ours as an institution. John Saltz, I was taken by it when I read the uh, remarks later and heard him actually say personally, not there because of the chain of command, not because of the commander in chief, Barack Obama, the president, but because he personally, he put that word in. It meant something to me. Here's a man of honor. Your thoughts, John Saltz, about the impact of Admiral Mullen as chairman of Joint Chiefs. Since I've been running vote bets in the past four years and sitting in that room, it was the greatest surprise I'd have certainly ever had in politics. Uh, I, I never expected him to say that. I, I was absolutely shocked, pleasantly, that he did. I, I think that means a lot. And, and after that, there was a, an exchange with Senator Sessions who, who said, well, I think that this is command influence, which is a sort of a dirty word in, under the Uniform Code of Military Justice to influence your subordinates. And Admiral Mullen actually shot back leadership. And I mean, it, he talked about it being generational, uh, how younger veterans today feel probably differently than, than, than older veterans. But to say it personally, with, with no politics involved, I, I think it's a real credit that we have a chairman who's going to give his honest opinion to Congress, no matter you know who's the president. He served, obviously, for Republican and Democrat. It was, it was humbling, and I was, I was certainly honored to be in the room. Yeah, and I think one of the things he hit on really strongly was the values, the integrity. And as John knows, in the military, you wear your values on your dog tags. It's, it's a really important part of what you do. Let's, let's do another view. Here's John McCain. I respect John McCain, certainly his service. Uh, here he is talking about Don't Ask, Don't Tell with another view. I understand the opposition to it, and I've had these debates and discussions, but the day that the, the, the leadership of the military comes to me and says, Senator, we ought to change the policy, then I think we ought to consider seriously changing it, because those leaders in the military are the ones we give the responsibility to. Well, that was him in the college tour a while ago, a couple years ago with me, but here he is now. Here he is now. This would be a substantial and controversial change to a policy that has been successful for two decades. It would also present yet another challenge to our military at a time of already tremendous stress and strain. At this moment of immense hardship for our armed services, we should not be seeking to overturn the don't ask, don't tell policy. John Saltz, what do you make of that? I mean, it seems like his policy has changed. 
Yeah, Senator McCain's completely wrong. Let me address the core points. No, but he's, right. he's fighting with himself because a few years ago in the college tour, he was well, open to what he heard from the military. Now he's saying he's decided this isn't the right thing to do now. Well, let's talk about why it is the right thing to do. For the past few years, when the Army wasn't meeting the recruiting goals, we were letting felons into the military. And these felons came in, and they were in a town that I happen to be in, Mamadiya, which is one of the absolute worst towns you can be in Iraq. And this convicted felon murdered a family, and then two U.S. soldiers were taken prisoner and killed as a, as a retraction of that, or as a rebuttal. So you tell me what's worked for unit cohesion. Letting convicted felons into the military because we're so low on recruiting or, or retention issues that we face, yet people people who want to serve honorably, uh, like some of the gay troops that are serving, then get kicked out. It makes absolutely no sense. So at a time when the military is overextended and guys are doing two, three, four tours, units in the Army Reserve and National Guard are being cross-transferred and meshed together, you're going to say okay. that this is not the right time? It's ridiculous. Let me ask you, that, uh, I'll take the other view since both you guys are positive here. Let me just try this other argument. Is the Donia Stantel policy basically used uh, not to embarrass people or to keep them from identifying who they are in terms of orientation, but it's one more prod towards some sort of disciplinary measure that if you say a person you can't admit you're gay, then you're putting one extra prod to keep the discipline in order. Is that an argument for it? I mean, when it was initially put in place, it was pushed in place as a stepping stone. Let's, let's get here, then we can move beyond. And I think oh, was it? I believe so. I believe so. And I think we're at a time now we can move beyond. And, and we're, I think Senator McCain is wrong. Is There's no better time to move beyond than while we're at war, while we need these okay. Arabic linguists. If you were right. chairman of the Joint Chiefs right now, John Saltz, and you had to implement this policy, and you were told by the Commander-in-Chief, go for it. Put this into effect over the next year. What changes would you do in the military code of uh, discipline, et cetera? Yeah. I wasn't in the military. I was in the Peace Corps. I assume we had gay people in the Peace Corps didn't operate in certainly as intimate an environment as the military can be. But it was certainly no problem with the Peace Corps. But let me ask you this. Is there anything you have to do to change the way the disciplinary works once you have gay uh, soldiers in the same barracks, for example, close quarters? Is, is there anything you have to do differently than you do now? I don't know. You tell me. Absolutely, absolutely not. In fact, the easiest thing is the easiest thing to do here is tell the military, let gay serve openly. The hardest thing to do is for Congress to pass legislation repealing the law. And the reason is because we're the most disciplined branch of the federal government. What, what our command structure says goes. So our troops are going to listen to their commanders, and we have the strictest guidelines in regards to what we call heterosexual relationships. So an officer cannot be involved physically, intimately in any way with a non-commissioned officer or an enlisted right. member. They get kicked out. So these strict guidelines that, that mandate so and, they would and apply, overwatch they would heterosexual apply in, uh, in gay relationships as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we have men and women serving together in places like Baghdad. That's what people tell me. Airport. Okay. I listen to you guys. You were in. I wasn't. Thank you, John. Thank you, Chris. Stuart, John Powers, John Sultz, thanks for coming. Please come back again. I'm sure we're going to talk about this again.